Today on Monkey Life, two unusual new arrivals at the park bring a fresh challenge for the team. It's a bit like learning a completely new language, so there's going to be a lot of hard work moving forward. Chimp Freddy has an uncomfortable problem. Stitch, please. But can a human medical specialist get to the bottom of it? Lift these blue areas, the areas that he's bleeding from, they are in effect hemorrhoids. And a new baby for woolly mum Zingu. Monkey World in Dorset, buried deep in the English countryside, is the largest sanctuary of its kind on the planet. The team, led by Dr Alison Cronin, rescue and rehabilitate abused and unwanted primates from all over the world. Now she's starting to look around. I think we're going to make good progress. The park provides a home for more than 250 monkeys and apes from 22 different species. It's early morning at Heathrow Airport's Animal Reception Centre, where Monkey World's newest arrivals, white-throated Gwenons Benny and Nia, have spent the night in their travel crates. Their arrival was held up because of paperwork issues when they landed, after flying in from Beirut with Alison. It's been an anxious night for everyone, but with the documents now accepted, the pair are about to head back to the park where an excited team are waiting for them. They had a bit of a hiccup when they, they landed at Heathrow last night, so they've not arrived when we originally planned. Um, so, yeah, the poor guys have, have had a long time in their travel crate, so now it's just a case of get them here ASAP, get them into a room, they can stretch their legs and start to settle in. What's going on, eh? There you go. Yeah, it's not actually <laughs> Benny and Nia are going to be living in a purpose-built house and enclosure. But before they're allowed outside, they need to get used to their new surroundings inside. Hey, you missus. <laughs> First, they're weighed. 10.18. Next, they'll be let into their new bedrooms, one at a time. It's a while since they've had such a big space to move freely around in. This is it, guys. You're going in together. Yeah. yeah, they haven't been in for together for a couple of weeks, I think, but um, they live together permanently prior to that, so... Nia is first. She may be the more confident of the two, but she takes her time checking everything out, before finally summoning up the courage to leave the travel crate and move into her new bedroom. She begins to explore and seems fascinated by the world outside the window. Benny is next. While they were being looked after in Lebanon, the pair spent much of their time in separate cages because Benny seemed nervous of Nia at feeding time. But Alison is confident the new bedrooms will allow them plenty of space. Benny joins Nia and, although a little anxious, seems relaxed in her company. It's just really nice to see them able to sort of run, even though it's only three bedrooms so far, but running back and forth, so active. And that's what those little scrawny legs need. So I'm um, waiting for them to build up some muscle and a bit more confidence, get stuck into their food and put on some condition. But they're looking good. The team take the chance to observe them closely. Looking after Gwenons will be a new experience and a big learning curve for all involved. Try it, Benny. Come on. Good boy. Good boy, Benny. Did you get it? Good boy. Straight in? Yeah. Very little is known about the pair, other than that they were illegally taken from the wild. Information about the species is limited, and Alison is pretty certain Benny and Nia are the only two white-throated Gwenons currently in legal captivity in the world. It's a huge responsibility for the team, but a very exciting one. Obviously, we're going to have to do quite a lot of observations of them and stuff. It's a bit like learning a completely new language as well, because we need to kind of pick up what all their vocalizations mean, all their kind of behaviorisms and mannerisms, 
that are either unique to the individual but also to the species as well. So there's going to be a lot of hard work moving forward to make sure that we are fulfilling all of their needs and doing everything that they need. Obviously we do want to make sure 100% that they are okay staying together overnight when we're not here. So we'll just keep watching them till the end of the day, make sure that they're happy, they're settled and we'll just make sure we come in nice and early and check on them in the morning and then take the next step from there. So far, everything is looking positive. The pair seem happy together, but they'll need time to settle in and recover from their journey. In the coming days, they'll be tested for parasites before being allowed outside for the first time. And they may even get to meet some new friends. A few months ago, popular and lively chimp Bart became very ill. After a thorough medical check, he was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes. It was a shock for everyone and a first for the primate care team at Monkey World. For a while, it was touch and go. But the team rose to the challenge and as a result of their hard work and dedication, Bart has been getting stronger and stronger each day. To everyone's relief, things are really looking up for the young chimp. Bart's doing great. He is actually better than we expected him to be. Uh, we expected to get him sort of back to the health that he was, but he seems to have gone way past that and he's having a bit of a growth spurt now. His muscles are really well developed and he just looks amazing. He's a lot healthier, he's a lot happier than um, he was before, so he's doing really well. But Bart isn't completely out of the woods. Diabetes is a serious condition and he'll need constant monitoring and medication for the rest of his life. Bart? Around. Every day, his blood glucose levels are tested and he's given an insulin injection. He's pretty stable most days now, um, so his insulin um, dose ha actually hasn't changed in quite a long time. Um, so he'll have that and then he'll carry on back with his day. Medication is only one part of managing Bart's condition. The most important aspect is getting his food right. It's key to keeping him strong and healthy. When he was first diagnosed, the team had to completely rethink his and the rest of the group's diet. They went back to basics and, through careful testing and trials, have now discovered how different foods affect his condition. As a result, they've come up with a strict feeding regime for Bart, which seems to work for him and the others. The biggest thing really for his management as in the group and for his diet is to make sure he doesn't really go too long without feeding. So we tend to feed them once every um, hour to an hour and a half. Um, we don't like him to go more than two hours without food and that just means he's getting that gradual release. Um, he's constantly got something breaking down in, he, in his system and that just means that he's got a slow release of sugar throughout the day and that's how we can keep him stable. If we can keep his blood glucose level stable um, and we're not fluctuating too much then he'll be happier, his moods will be improved um, and in general he's just a lot healthier. Looking ahead, the team will need to keep a close eye on Bart and his condition as he grows and matures. We've got the diet side of Bart's life sorted. Uh, managing his diabetes, that bit is, we're pretty happy with. We may need to make changes, but we're quite content with that. There are obviously other things that will affect his blood glucose levels as well. So things like a growth spurt. Um, he'll be 11 this year, so he's naturally going to mature. He's already starting to get bigger and that could cause issues. Um, I don't expect it's going to cause massive issues, but it's something that we need to consider with him. Um, but it's just like everything. Everything's going to have some sort of effect on his blood glucose levels. But if we can keep on top of him and keep a close eye on him, um, we should be able to deal with that fine. One thing's for sure. The rest of the group seem happy to have their pal Bart back to his happy, confident self. Bart's doing great in the group. He's, he's still got the same strong relationships that he had before any of this started. He's really getting on really well with the group and the rest of the group are coping absolutely fine with him having these extra bits of treats as well. Um, so he's, he's just a happy chimp. He's sort of pretty much back to the Bart we had a few years ago. At the orangutan nursery, there's a seasonal treat awaiting the group. Fresh grapes on the vine. The primate care team are working hard to place them all around the enclosure, positioning the tasty fruit so the orangutans will have to use their climbing ability to reach them. Everything put up high to encourage everyone to climbing around. So this is great stuff. So there, uh, <coughs> when you put everything 
all the breakfast in the morning all around, they will climbing around just like what they do in the wild. There are six to feed in the nursery, all juveniles, apart from Oshin. Recently, she was under the weather, but she's now fully recovered, and as a female who loves her food, will be ready to grab her share. Sylvester and Jin lead the excited group out, all heading up high in their rush to reach the tasty grapes. Oshin, on the other hand, will always take the easy option and collects the bunches which have fallen to the ground. High above her on the cargo net, acrobatically holding on with one hand while using his mouth to store as many grapes as he can, Jin demonstrates his agility. While Sylvester shows off his dexterity, using his toes to secure the grapes. In the wild, Orangutans are the largest tree-dwelling animal on the planet and spend most of their time in the tree canopy foraging and eating. The nursery group have all gathered up a decent-sized portion and tuck in, while keeping an eye out in case anyone makes a grab for their breakfast. Young Mimi is the last into the enclosure, but still manages to find her share. She spent the first two years of her life without the company of other orangutans, but has come on in leaps and bounds over the last few months. Mimi has been fantastic. She's really, really confident. She's moving everywhere, anywhere, in the house, enclosure, roof feeding, climbing around top platform in the enclosure, no problem. She's just, she's just super confident. She's fantastic. She's great. Everybody seemed like really like her as well, especially like Bulu and Rika. They're always spending time with Mimi as well. And Mimi loves Oshin, and Oshin loves her food so much. But when it comes to Mimi, Oshin happy to share her food with her, no problem. The morning treat has been a great success for the whole group and got them moving and using their natural climbing ability and agility. Although Jin seems to have had one bunch too many. This morning is fabulous. Everybody climbing around and enjoying the grapes. Beautiful morning this morning. Having had their fill, it's time to do what this group does best, playtime and having fun. And when you're young, it's good to get a helping hand. With so many primates to care for, the team at the park occasionally come across an ailment requiring specialist treatment. At the Bachelor Chimps, poor Freddy has got a rather delicate condition down below. Over the years, he's suffered from hemorrhoids, also known as piles. Just like in humans, they cause painful swellings in the rectal area, which tend to itch and cause difficult bowel movements. Back here again, <laughs> in the same place, same animal. Today, wildlife vet John Lewis has been joined by Mr. Andrew Clark, a consultant general surgeon who specializes in pelvic floor disorders. It's not the first time he's seen Freddie. We've had three goes on him. Because remember, last mm. time was your second time seeing him, if I remember correctly? It was. Yeah. So he's one of your long-term patients. He is. He's becoming a friend of mine, he's young Freddie. Freddie was rescued in 1995 in rather strange and sad circumstances. A policeman found him wandering around in a park in Austria. No one knows how he got there, but it's thought he may have been an abandoned pet. He was only around six years old at the time. Alison and her late husband, Jim Cronin, went to Austria to pick him up, and once at the park, he joined the rowdy bachelors. Good boy. <laughs> Consultant Andrew Clark is familiar with Freddie's condition. He performed a similar operation on the chimp nine years ago. 
if we try this now because I think that's it's the least invasive it's the safest thing it's the, the quickest thing to recover from but he normally operates on human patients so John Lewis is assisting throughout the procedure the primate care team have managed to successfully anesthetize Freddie by hand injection and he's quickly brought to the Parks Hospital we've got to intubate him so what is he weighing? John intubates him and makes sure he's stable so the procedure can begin. I mean, generally, he's in, in some good condition, really. He's overweight, and that the keepers now know about, and they should try and address that, because he's um, apparently he's a bit of a hoover. He will go around picking up any food that's left over anywhere. But he has put weight on, and we'd like to see that weight off. Apart from that, he looks like a pretty normal chimp. I mean, he has a few little tiny nicks on him, let's see here. So that's just life as a chimp, that's absolutely nothing at all. So no, apart from that, he's fine. Now, Andrew can examine the affected area. This, these blue areas are the areas that he's bleeding from, and they are, they are in effect hemorrhoids or mucosal prolapse. The inner lining of the rectum is protruding through the anal canal, and that's why he's bleeding. And, what we're debating is that really what we're seeing is the effect of the problem and, and what we're dealing with is not the cause. While the piles are obvious, the cause of Freddie's bleeding is another issue. It seems that part of his bowel is folding in on itself, causing Freddie to strain when defecating. It may require a separate, far longer and more complicated operation to rectify. It's something Andrew often carries out on humans but has never performed on a chimp. It ups the stakes massively, and I'd need to just learn about the anatomy of a male chimpanzee's pelvic floor so that I can minimise any surprises. But today, he's just going to treat the hemorrhoids using cutting-edge technology usually reserved for his human patients. We've had, um, we've had a lot of success with this procedure over the years in humans. Um, very high patient satisfaction, um, low pain, low recurrence rates. He's locating each individual hemorrhoid and then removing them by stitching and cutting off the blood supply. You're at your end, um, John. You yeah. happy? Stitch, please. Thank you. It looks better. Yeah, it looks better I, than I've seen it. Yeah. So, so that's why I think we should try and just give it a little bit of time to see. The procedure is fairly quick, taking just 45 minutes. And Andrew is confident Freddie's discomfort will be eased for now. The, the procedure that we did today is safe and the recovery is quick. Um, we'll see how events unfold and I think we need to give it a few weeks. But if, despite the measures today, he continues to strain and has a very difficult bowel function, then we may need to consider um, procedures that could elevate the pelvic floor, that could stop this slippage um, and straighten the rectum so that he's not straining. Now it's a case of wait and see, as Freddy returns to the chimp bedrooms to recover from today's operation. The team will continue to assess him over the coming months to see if any further action will be required. There's been some exciting news at Lavar's group of woolly monkeys. When staff arrived early this morning, they discovered they had a new arrival. Overnight, Zingu had given birth. Baby is so cute, uh, really fluffy, very pretty. Uh, all babies are cute, but this is a particularly pretty baby. A fairly big baby for, uh, compared to some of the others that we've seen, so fairly well developed, very furry, very uh, fresh faced and um, bright eyeing around the house. The grip, which is naturally very strong when uh, babies are born, particularly in the wild, they have to have a really strong grip straight away. That is the same here at the park. The baby is gripping on really well and is, seems to be very confident in gripping onto mum as mum is moving around the house. Zingu is a really experienced mum. Having already successfully reared two healthy woolies, Zavi and Olivia. The team are hopeful this baby will follow suit. While son Zavi has moved on and is now in Chippy's group, two year old daughter Olivia is still with mum and is already showing a keen interest in her new sibling. Despite having experienced a long and exhausting night, 
Zingu is coping well with the new arrival. She was really tired this morning and she's been quite grumpy with a couple of the youngsters around her, but she has been actively seeking out and um, sitting ne particularly next to Lavar and a couple of the other youngsters. She has been napping a lot uh, so far today, but that's just to be as expected. She must be absolutely exhausted. But as the day has gone on, she has got a lot more relaxed, so we are confident that she'll carry on being a fabulous mother. It's extremely difficult to determine the sex of newborn woolies, but the team have managed to get a few close-up peeks at the baby and have a good idea. As we've been watching throughout the morning, we are pretty sure that we um, have a little girl on our hands here, but we will continue to watch out um, over the next couple of days just to confirm and get a 100% uh, accurate look at her. And a quick check with the dates has confirmed that Lavar is the new baby's dad. He's already had a good look at his newborn daughter and he's doing a great job of keeping the other youngsters busy, providing mum Zingu with some well-deserved peace. As Lavar gets older, he just gets better and better. He's just getting more distinguished and he's just getting incredibly handsome as the days go by. But with that, he's getting much more relaxed around the rest of the group. Um, today has been a day filled with play. He just spends an awful lot of time with the youngsters, particularly Cosmo and um, Olivia. He's also really close to Carlos and they do spend a lot of time playing. And the house is just filled with laughter, which is lovely to hear from the woolly monkeys. There are less than 40 woolly monkeys in captivity outside of the Amazon basin. It's a great success story for Monkey World, as woolies in captivity are facing extinction, making every newborn extra special. Next time on Monkey Life, Marmoset Amy has her day in court, represented by Alison. The previous owner of Amy the Marmoset Monkey has found, been found guilty of neglect. And the chase is on after a sweet treat for the squirrel monkeys.